Hi, my name is Mike Hayton. I'm a consultant hand surgeon at Wrightington Hospital. Um, this is the second in a series of revision for the FRCS um, orthopedic uh, intercollegiate board exam, and these are primarily on hand surgery. Uh, some of the images uh, may be interoperative uh, pictures, so therefore, members of the lay public who perhaps haven't seen these images before should proceed with uh, some caution. Uh, this um, is a patient who uh, presents with um, numbness in the thumb, index and middle finger uh, and a clumsiness in the, uh, in the thumb. Uh, what do you see? Okay, are there any investigations that you would like to, uh, to perform? Rather than simple uh, nerve conduction studies, is there any extra investigation your neurophysiologist might perform, particularly on the thenar muscles? So we agree the patient's got a very severe carpal tunnel syndrome. Um, would you recommend surgery for this patient? What would you warn the patient about, um, about the surgery? So the patient has um, uh, some improvement in sensation and protective sensations uh, returns. What would you tell them about the, uh, the thenar muscles? What muscles in the, uh, uh, in the hand does the uh, median nerve supply? And what muscles in the hand does the ulnar nerve supply? Next slide. Uh, this is a 65-year-old uh, lady who uh, presents with well-localized pain to the base of her thumb. Um, it's made worse with uh, opening jars. Um, uh, what do you see on the x-ray? And what's the diagnosis? Uh, what would your first line treatment be for this lady? Okay, so she's failed conservative management and uh, there are a number of surgeries that can be performed. Can you, uh, can you outline the, uh, the broad principles of the surgeries? Now let's change the clinical scenario. This is now a 32-year-old right-hand dominant male who has got uh, secondary osteoarthritis. Uh, from an old fracture. Um, uh, what would you recommend the surgical treatment for that individual, for a 32-year-old high-demand male? What risks and complications would you warn the patient about um, a thumb CMC joint fusion? Have you ever done a thumb CMC joint fusion? And if you had, can you tell me the broad principles? Next slide. This lady presents with a volar wrist lump. Can you tell me what it is? Are there any investigations you'd perform? And how would you treat this? Would you aspirate it? Would you perform surgery on it? What are the risks of surgery? This is a 45-year-old uh, female who has fallen and has uh, sustained a distal radial fracture and ulnar styloid fracture. Can you tell me about this x-ray? What things on a plain radiograph do you look for uh, to see whether the fracture is unstable or whether it's stable? How would you manage this in a 45-year-old uh, uh, lady? Next slide. These are two brothers, um, one of which fell off a, a swing and uh, had an elbow injury. He came to, uh, to see me uh, with a prominent radial head and it was thought that he was dislocated. But I was able to take a photograph of his other brother who would got a similar appearance. And here's his plain radiograph. And you can see that the uh, radial head is dislocated. So this could be mistaken as being a traumatic dislocation of the radial head. What features on this x-ray, and you'll have to look carefully at the radial head, would suggest that it's a congenital dislocation apart from a traumatic dislocation. One, of course, is that the fact that his brother's got a similar appearance, but can you see how the radial head is convex uh, as it has never articulated with the capitellum? A normal capitellum is molded, a um, normal radial head is molded by the capitellum and is concave. In cases of doubt, you'd get a CT scan to see um, uh, the shape of the radial head. Thank you, and good luck with the exam.